Good day, everyone. So welcome to this subject, the contemporary world. I am Ms. Novi Dibalikot, your instructor. So we are now in our lesson 14, and I will be talking about environmental problems and sustainable development. So but before that, uh, let me have a recap first. Last time, I have discussed to you about the global migration, and, and we learned about uh, what is migration and what are the reasons for the migration of people and we or I discussed to you about the problems or the detriments as well as the benefits of the sending and the receiving countries of these migrants. So this time um, we will be talking about um environmental problems and at the same time uh, sustainable development so you are expected to of course differentiate the stability the term stability from sustainability discuss the origins and manifestations of global environmental crisis articulate some models of global sustainable development so in this uh, lesson um, uh, we will discuss various environmental challenges that the world faces today and how do countries balance their need for development with uh, the necessity to protect their environment. All right, let us start with defining what is stability from sustainability. So stability is the condition of being stable or in equilibrium and thus resistant to change while sustainability is the ability to sustain something you know? so in ecology it means of of configuring civilization and human activity so that society and its members and its economies are able to meet their needs and express their greatest potential in the present while preserving biodiversity and natural ecosystems, planning and acting for the ability to maintain, no? to maintain these ideals for, for future generations. So example of environmental sustainability is the rate of renewable resource harvest no? uh, for pr pollution creation and non-renewable resource deple depletion that can be continued indefinitely. So if they cannot be continued indefinitely, then they are not sustainable, all right? So are you familiar with these sites? No? Look around your environment. No? So are these things um, observable in your surroundings? So if you live in metropolitan Manila and travel to school or to work every day the moment you step out of your home, you are already exposed to the most serious problem that humanity faces today. And that is the deteriorating state of the environment. And as you walk out of the gate, the fetid smell of uncollected garbage hits you and you go near the trash bin curious about what is causing the smell and you see rotting vegetables and dead rat and a bunch of whatnot packed in plastic so these wastes are already indicative of some environmental problems no the vegetables ought to be added to a compost pile the rat either burned or buried to also get get rid of the lice that might jump into the hair of the children playing nearby and the plastics washed and recycled because unlike the other two ways it cannot be decomposed you also hop on the first bus and as it approaches edsa for example the traffic slows down considerably so this scene these sites are normal in manila morning so like the morning traffic as the saying goes that the turtle can out even the fastest of the motor vehicles so when you look out 
of the window and see the smoke coming out of the diesel vehicles. And as you lift your head up to the sky, you see nothing but smog. Horsey of the cars and the buses, as well as the coal plant and several industrial sites located alongside uh, the Pasig River. So you also notice oil spots on the river, not to mention the tons of human and non-human waste floating alongside each other. So in the city you live in, there is a dying river and increasingly poisonous sky and enormous amount of waste and a declining quality of life. It is at this point that you recognize the ecological crisis happening around you and how the deterioration of the environment has destabilized populations and species raising the specter of extinction for some and a lesser quality of life for the survivors of the offspring. So according to the Conserve Energy Future website, they listed you know, the following environmental challenges that the world faces today. So let us discuss it one by one. You know? So first is the depredation caused by industrial transportation and defilling of the sea. Uh, toxins and plastics in the ground, the defilling of rivers and waterbeds by oil spill and acid rain, the dumping of urban wastes. Second, changes in global weather patterns, flash floods, extreme snowstorms, and the spread of deserts, and the surge in the ocean and the land temperatures leading to a rise in sea levels as the polar ice caps melt because of the weather, plus the flooding of many lowland areas across the world. Third is overpopulation. Fourth, the exhaustion of the world's natural non-renewable resources from oil reserves to minerals to potable water. Fifth, uh, uh, the problem on waste disposal no? due to the excessive amount of waste from plastic to food packages to electronic waste and loaded by communities in landfills as well as on the ocean and the dumping of nuclear wastes. Sixth, the, de the destruction of million-year-old ecosystems and the loss of biodiversity, destruction of the coral reefs and the massive deforestation that have led to the extinction of particular species and the decline in the number of others. Seven, the reduction of oxygen and the increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere because of deforestation, resulting in the rise in the ocean acidity by as much as 150% in the last 250 years. Eight, is the depletion of the ozone layer protecting the planet from the sun's deadly ultraviolet rays due to chlorofluorocarbons in the atmosphere. Nine is the deadly acid drain as a result of fossil fuel combustion, toxic chemicals from erupting volcanoes and the massive rotting vegetables filling up garbage dumped or left on the streets. Ten is the water pollution arising from industrial and community waste residues seeping into the ground of water tables, rivers, and the seas. 11 is urban sprawls that continue to expand as the city turns into megalopolis, destroying farmlands, increasing traffic gridlock, and making smog, smog cloud a permanent, this is a permanent urban fixture. 12 pandemics and other threats to public health arising from wastes mixing with drinking water polluted environment that become breeding grounds for mosquitoes and disease, carrying rodents, and pollutions. And the 13th, a radical alteration of food system because of genetic modifications in food production, or we call it uh, genetically modified or GM, GM crops. Okay, so those are some of the examples of the 
environmental problems. Another major environmental problems, for example, is are the man-made pollution from different countries around the world. So let's take a tour from these countries. Let us start with uh, um, the city of Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. All right. So you men exaggerate other natural environmental problems. For example, in this city, Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, um, sand storms combined with combustion, combustion exhaust from traffic and industrial waste has led the World Health Organization to declare this city, Riyadh, huh, as one of the most polluted cities in the world. So it is this human contribution that has become an immediate cause of worry. Coal fumes coming out from industries and setting down in surrounding areas contaminated 20% of China's soil. So with the rice uh, lands in Hunan and Zuzu found to have heavy metals from the mines threatening the food supply. So that is in China. So India, on the other hand, reported in 2015 that air pollution in that country was at its worst. So aggravated by the Indian government's inadequate monitoring system. So there were only 70 national air quality net networks covering 89 cities across the continent. So furthermore, 94% of Nigeria's population, huh? Nigeria's population is exposed to air pollution that the World Health Organization warned as reaching dangerous levels. While Gaborone, the capital of Botswana, also the seven, is the seventh most polluted city in the world, where the emission of aerosols and other gases from car exhaust, burning of wood or garbage, indoor um, cooking and diesel fueled electric genera generators, and petrochemical plants are pro projected to quadruple by 2030. So waste coming out of coal copper and gold mines flowing up into the rivers, into the oceans, is destroying also the sea life of permitting the bodies of those which survived with poison, mercury, and tuna prominently. The biggest copper mine in India, the Malanj Khand, discharges high level of toxic heavy metals into the, their water streams. While in China also, the tailings from the operations of the Shanxi Mankiao Ecological Mining, producing 12,000 tons of gold per year, have caused pollution and safety problems. So conditions in China have become very critical as the toxic byproducts of production processes are being produced much more rapidly than the earth can absorb. So meanwhile, for over a century, coal mines in West Virginia no, um, have pumped chemical laden waste water directly into the ground where it can leach into the water table and in turn what had been drinkable water into a poisonous cocktail of chemicals. So the system goes back generations and could soon render much of the state's water undrinkable. All right. So another man-made pollution in Africa. Are you familiar with um, aerosol? So in West Africa, in West Africa has affected by the atmospheric circulation system that controls everything from the wind and rainfall across huge swaths of the region. So the temperature to rainfall across Asian monsoon in turn the Asian monsoon in turn um, had become the had become the transport of polluted polluted air into the stratosphere and the scientists are now linking the Pacific storms to the spread of pollution in Asia. So like aerosol, it is tagged as the culprit in the changing rainfall patterns in 
Asia, no? And in the Atlantic Ocean. So this is West Africa. So, what is aerosol? Aerosol is the suspension of a fine uh, solid particles or liquid droplets in air or another gas. So, aerosol can be natural or anthropogenic. An example of this, um, natural aerosols are fog or mist or dust or forest exudates and geyser steam. And anthropogenic aerosols are particulate air pollution pollutants and smoke. So these climatic disruptions have similarly caused drought all over Asia and Africa and accelerated the pace of desertification in certain areas. Like 20 years ago, well, it was said that there were over 50,000 um, rivers in China. No? And in 2013, you know, as a result of climate change and uncontrolled urban growth and rapid industrialization, 28,000 of these rivers had disappeared, right? So another man-made pollution. So people's health has been severely also compromised due to this man-made pollution. An archive article in the journal Scientific American blamed the pollution for contributing to more than half you know, a million premature deaths each year at the cost of hundreds of billions of dollars. So the International Agency for Research on Cancer blamed this air pollution for the death of 223,000 lung cancer patients in 2010. So in Indonesia and Malaysia, the link between forest fires and mortality had been well established. The aforementioned coal mining in West Virginia also mentioned a while ago has also made people sick, some with rare cancers, little kids with kidney stones and premature deaths and children born with congenital disabilities and adults having shorter life expectancy. So with this up problem, who are mostly affected? So it has been the poor who are mostly severely affected by these environmental problems. So their low income and poverty already put them at a disadvantage by not having the resources to afford good health care and to live in unpolluted areas and to eat healthy um, food and the like. No? So, um, in the United States, no? a Yale University research team studying areas with high level of pollution observed that the greater concentration of Hispanics, Asians, African Americans, or poor residents in the area are more likely um, that dangerous compounds has the, uh, or poor residents in an area, the more likely that dangerous compounds such as vanadium nitrates and zinc are in the mix of fa fa fine particles they breathe. So in India, on the other hand, studies on adults' health reveal that 46% in Delhi in India and 56% of in Calcutta have impaired lung function due to air pollution and in china also the toxicity of the soil has raised concern over their food security and the health of the most vulnerable especially the peasant communities and those living in factory cities and in 2006 for example 160 ac um, acres of land in Shinma, China was badly poisoned by cadmium and two people died and 150 were known to be poisoned and the entire village was abandoned and in the other hand Hong Kong also faces the same problem in 2004. So in our country, no Metro Manila in our country, in metropolitan Manila, 
37%, or that is 4 million people of the population, live in the slum of suburb, also most pronounced due to their hazardous location, urban environmental problems, and threats of climate change, air pollution, and solid waste management, weak disaster, or or poor risk management and limiting coping strategies of households. Marifi Balesteros concludes that this unhealthy environment in Metro Manila deepens poverty and increases the vulnerability of both the poor and the non-poor living in slums and excludes the slum poor from growth. One of the major ironies of urban pollution is that the necessities that the poor has access to are also the sources of the problem. The main workforce of the public transport system is the bus. However, because it runs mainly in diesel fuel, it is now considered one of the largest contributors to environmental pollution problems worldwide. And this problem is expected to worsen as the middle classes and the elites buy more cars and as the road systems are improved to give people more chance to travel the other mode of transportation that the poor can afford is motorbike which is also called the two and the three wheeled vehicles so according to the center of science and environment in Delhi, india two wheelers uh, form a staggering 75% to 80% of the traffic in most Asian countries. Motorbikes burn oil and gasoline and emit more smoke, carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and particulate matter than the gas-only four-stroke engines found in newer motorcycles. And finally, adding to this predicament is the proliferation of the diesel-run cars. These vehicles usually command a lower price because of their durability and low operate, operating cost, and hence affordable to the middle class. However, these diesel run cars also release four times of the toxic pollution as the buses.